at five months old was referred to the same Nashville hospital after having been refused treatment at the local hospital. I believe she is also a victim of the electromagnetic torture. Where does it stop? When are we re-given our rights as humans and as citizens? Does being African Americans qualify us as non-black or non-white and non-American citizens or non-American people? We seem to have a double bind going. Thank you. Mr. Marshall? Mrs. Marshall? Good afternoon. My name is Connie Marshall. I'm a former mayoral candidate from Louisville, Kentucky. I have never been involved in any criminal activity. I found a document in my bank account that said, problem with Kentucky government, check federal government paperwork and file before releasing information to anyone. I am an eight-year victim survivor of assaults by directed energy weapons. The torture I've experienced consists of body overheating, body extremely cold, seizures, heart pain, ear aches, itching behind eyes, burning behind eyes, swelling, headaches, involuntary movement of my limbs, exhaustion, speeding and heart racing, hair coming out by the handfuls as if I've had chemotherapy, mind paralysis, being hypnotized or placed in a trance-type state, being tracked by a drone or satellite, controlled dreams, sleep deprivation, B2K, which is voice to skull, projected sound, extreme muscle spasms, and extreme muscle cramps, being made to fall down, blue circles around the pupils of my eyes, and I'm here and you can look at them if you like, low frequency noises in my home, high frequency noises in my home, sexual stimulation, numerous electrical appliances in my home are destroyed, four computers, two fax machines, seven telephones, four CD players, VCR, DVD players, electrical igniter switch on my furnace, washer and dryer, air conditioner, also my car radio, CD player, and engine were destroyed. I am watched in my home 24 hours a day and followed, followed around everywhere I go, though I do not have a criminal history. When I ran for mayor of my town, I was also attacked at debates and forums. My website is www.justiceforallcitizens.com. Thank you. And I would like to leave these flyers with you all as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Alan Hornsblum. My name's Alan Hornblum. I'm a Philadelphia-based author who has written books on things running the gamut from organized crime to Soviet espionage. Uh, but for the purposes of this meeting, I've written two books on the history of using prison inmates as test subjects. You may be familiar with one or both of them. I'm working with a couple colleagues now on the history of using institutionalized children as test subjects for research, and I can assure you some of the material I'm finding is quite astounding, including the fact that Nobel Prize winners went to uh, institutions for the feeble-minded to use them as test subjects. And in interviewing people over the years, not just test subjects, which I do on a regular basis, but also the doctors who initiated these uh, experiments, these clinical trials, uh, I'm talking about people like Konstantin Malektos and Albert Kligman and Hilary Kroprowski, Chester Southam, some of the top researchers of the 20th century. Most of them are famous and some are infamous. It's remarkable that almost all of them articulate how little medical ethics was taught in medical schools at the time. And I had to bring up, uh, I, I had to educate one of them, in fact, about the Nuremberg Code. When I mentioned it, he wasn't even familiar with it. These problems with regard to medical ethics are still there. I periodically give talks at universities and med schools, and uh, it's, it's stunning to me that when I go into a bookstore at the university and go in, maybe I'll see one of my books there. Of course, I'm a little bit uh, disturbed when they don't, but I also don't see anything by Harriet Washington or by James Jones' Bad Blood or by Jonathan Moreno's book. Medical ethics is an orphan in today's medical arena. It is out there in left field. They really de-emphasize it, and that's part of the continuing problem that doctors, as, as Dan said earlier when they do these studies, it's a cost-benefit analysis, and there's much more benefit to doing research, even when it breaks rules and laws and cuts corners, than by following the rules. 
And that's why I believe the commission has to make a very strong condemnation of Dr. Cutler and the institutions and doctors that he worked with, not just with regard to uh, Tuskegee and Guatemala, but there are so many other incidents and events out there. As Susan said, we will continue to discover these. There will be another commission like yours in 10 years going over what you didn't look at or what you didn't do. So I would encourage you to be as aggressive as possible, not just describe what happened, but really condemn those who broke the law because there's doctors making decisions right now, and those decisions are going the wrong way. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Deborah Paulson or Deborah Paulson? Hi, I'm Deborah Paulson from Kenosha, Wisconsin. I'm going to refer to a paper from Professor McCoy at the University of Wisconsin on no-touch torture. He talks about a total assault on all senses and sensibilities, auditory, visual, tactile, temporal, temperature, and survival, refined through years of practice. Sensory disorientation relies on a mix of sensory overload and sensory deprivation via banal procedures, isolation, then intense interrogation, heat and cold, light and dark, noise and silence, for a systematic attack on all human stimuli. I've been a um, human subject for experimentation for almost two years, and I stand with, I've contacted Dr. Hall, I stand with a very large group, Excuse me, I'm very nervous, but I'm very tired of um, having my rights taken away. And thank you for hearing me, and thank you for the others. I would like some help. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lisa Becker. Sorry. Pardon me. Thank you. My name is Lisa Becker. I am also from Wisconsin. I have been a non-consenting test subject in military medical ex research. Um, I, too, believe my experience is referred to as no-touch torture, utilizing defense technologies. Um, Jonathan Marino, he basically predicted all this uh, a number of years ago in his book, Un Undue Risk. Um, I'm asking you to help initiate a congressional investigation. Uh, we've all come a long way. This is what is needed. Uh, we want to have the accounts of this extreme human rights abuse that's going on in our country uh, documented and heard, all of the accounts. Uh, we also need what was done during the Clinton administration, which is a major declassification of some of these documents that are hiding what's been going on. Um, I speak for many when I say we've suffered long enough. My personal experience has been 10 years. I've been vilified. I've been ostracized. I've been tortured. I have burns on my body. I'm an American. I have rights. The answer to the question, the big question today, could it happen today? The answer is yes. It is happening today. It is happening for some of us every day. I am begging for you to help us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James Wallet. Walbert. My name is James Walbert. Uh, to date, I have one of the strongest cases documented of these unethical violations against our society. Uh, due to the facts of having the kinds of professionals that I have involved with this case, I have been able to prove that this crime against others and myself is real and shows, concern, uh, shows reason to be concerned with. I am in hopes that I am able to prove the same thing to this committee. And by the introduction of the evidence that I have to introduce to the committee, I and the professionals that are standing with myself in this crime would like for this committee to consider uh, the introduction of these documents with the growing concern of this crime to the President for his review. With these hopes in mind for this consideration, I would also like to ask of this committee to consider an investigation into these unethical violations of others and myself that are affected by this crime. With this consideration of this investigation uh, request into these matters, I would also like to point out the abuses of children that have been documented by the many professionals that I am currently working with into these matters of this crime. To date, the professionals have been documenting these offenses against the children that are related to the many victims of these uh, crimes. 
They have uh, proven this concern to be valid, as I am pointing out to this committee, the growing concern of fellow states that have now passed laws against forced chipping of an RFI 